I have a curveball in my box. What do you have in your box? Nothing curvy. All of these phalarites are all natural. They're untreated. These gems are so large. This is a really volatile, fragile yeah. material. <laughs> Ow! Rob, today is an exciting episode because I have a specimen to show you. Oh, like one of your own specimens? One of my own specimens. Oh, and I have a clue for it? Too. Yes. Is this a gem or a mineral? Don't be deceived. Can I go ahead and open it? Ooh, wow. Where did you get this? A friend. A friend. I love the orange color. Is that a, that's not a garnet. No, but there are good reasons for you to have thought that. I'm reminded of sphalerite by the color. <laughs> Wait, actually, is it sphalerite? It is sphalerite. Oh, no, okay. I thought that was kind of a wild guess, but it's basically just the color. It's also in the cubic crystal system mm -hmm. as it's garnet, and so it would be normal to confuse that with spessartine garnet just on first glance. Okay. This is a sphalerite on quartz. It's from China. Sphalerite can come in a variety of colors. It's an allochromatic gem, so in its purest form is colorless. But orange, and this bright fiery orange, is a really characteristic awesome color, color of sphalerite. Sphalerite is a zinc iron sulfide. 95% of all zinc is extracted from oh. sphalerite ore, so okay. it's a really important or of it's a good resource. Um, Sphalerite gets its name from the Greek word to deceive. Sphaleros. Right. So treacherous or to deceive. What about sphalerite makes it treacherous or deceptive? So again, there are a lot of different colors of sphalerite. A popular variety that is heavy in iron content is black sphalerite. Oh, okay. When mining, people mistakenly thought that that black sphalerite was galena, which is a primary okay. ore of lead. Yeah. So they were looking for lead, they were getting zinc instead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this piece in particular is from the Hunan province in China, but sphalerite is found all over the world, Germany, Spain, Bulgaria, even the United States. This is actually another piece that we have in our collection here. It's Phalerite on course. It comes from the Hunan province in China. So I always love to see pieces that That's, look similar, yeah. that are from the same place. That is the extent of what I know for today. I don't know any of the other specimens that we'll be talking about. Well, that makes two of us. You ready for the next I'm one? I'm ready. <gasps> Whoa! I love this one. This is Bulgarian Phalerite. A massive piece. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Look at them. You know, we get a lot of questions on this channel about like, what makes a gem? Well, a gem is anything that can be used for beauty and adornment. It's pretty difficult to facet, but it is a gem material. It's a four on the most scale of harness, so it is very soft. It has perfect dodecahedral cleavage, so you do have to be tricky when fasting. These are cut into some amazing fancy shapes. This one, the fire, so visible. One of the like marquee elements of sphalerite is its dispersion value. It has higher dispersion than diamond, than moissanite. Sphalerite has about three times the dispersion value of diamond. It has among the highest of any faceted color gemstone. White light is actually a combination of all the colors of the rainbow. Dispersion is essentially when white light travels into different mediums, it bends. And with the density of each object, it bends differently. Colors are a result of different wavelengths. In high dispersion materials, you have all sorts of colors of the rainbow, and the practical effect of that is when you move around a gemstone, you see all the colors. Separated. And this is called dispersion, and people call this effect fire. In colorless gemstones like Diamond, fabulite, moissanite, CZ, zircon. It's a little bit easier to detect the dispersion. In color gemstones, it's only when you have really high dispersion values that you can see this fiery effect. So these make very cool gemstones. For sure. And sphalerite is what we call this gem material, but in many parts of Europe, it's actually called blend for the German word for dazzle. Oh. There you go. Because sphalerite is an allochromatic gemstone, that means that its color is derived from impurities and outside sources and influences like radiation. So really, 
Sphalerite can occur in a ton of different colors potentially. The green sphalerite is actually colored by cobalt or iron. You can get a more reddish color with tin, even silver and molybdenum. You can also get colors influenced by calcium, germanium, copper, mercury, and cerium. Yeah, so you can get green, yellow, orange, red, brown, black, so a lot of different colors. Mm -hmm. I just love how vibrant the colors are. They're really it's rich. It's not just like pale orange, it's a super it's a rich, vivid version of vivid whatever color. color it is. Yeah. yeah. These gems are so large. They're really enormous. <laughs> they're, they're enormous. In all of them, you can see distinct cleavage planes. Mm -hmm. You also have a significant number of inclusions. It's not unattractive though, by any Oh means. no, and then you also have just some color zoning, and so it just looks like a little bit of like a swirl of just color. Just a little wispy dance in yeah. there. Let's talk about that cut. Yeah, very so cool. it's a very distinct cut. It's got this gigantic faceted dome. So this cut is called a Marco Inor, which is kind of a play on the Koh Inor, which is the name of a very famous, very large diamond. And Marco, the first name of the lapidary that developed this cut. A bit of a self tribute, the Marco Inor cut. I love very that. Very pretty. So this one is 351 carats. That is from Spain. The particular region uh, is known for really large carat weights, like uh, in the hundreds. That's awesome. Those three are obviously massively large. They're huge. Um, more collector's display pieces. Yeah, I mean. But sphalerite can come in jewelry. You mm -hmm. have to be careful because of its durability. But this is a beautiful ring. And so it does make really beautiful gemstone jewelry, but it's important as with any other gemstone and any other jewelry that you have to know how to properly care for it. So what would be a proper care method or cleaning method for this? You want to do something that's really gentle. You want to use lukewarm, soapy water with a very, very soft brush to kind of gently clean it, and that is the extent of it. Good to know. So we know right off the bat that all of these phalarites are all natural, they're untreated. And we know that because there are no known treatments for sphalerite. And they're generally not produced as synthetics as well. You might have imitations, but you're not gonna get synthetic sphalerite. This. Oh, we got another box. We okay. Got, All right, you ready? I think we have two more boxes. We've got two more boxes. We're gonna open them up simultaneously. You ready? Okay. <laughs> Oh. oh, now wait a minute, hold on. I have a curveball in my box. What do you have in your box? Nothing curvy. <laughs> okay. What? I've got a bunch of stuff in mine. Okay, so the fun thing about all of these is all of these are actually from the United States. We have one that's actually from Tennessee. So this one is from the Elmwood mine, which oh. was a famous zinc mine. Yeah. It's quite hefty. I want to show you this with a flashlight oh, because- I thought I saw some colors Yeah, without light, it just looks kind of metallic. Metallic, for sure, I was gonna say. Pretty black, but then when you put some light on it, it looks like this nice, orangey, mm -hmm. brown, reddish material, particularly at the tips. That's pretty. So that one is really cool. This one has some really nice color as well. Really great red color. This one's actually yellow, and it comes from New York. This is definitely the yellowest specimen that we have on the table today. All that cerium. Yeah, all for sure. This guy is from Oklahoma, and actually what's interesting is that Oklahoma is also a large producer of galena, which can be found there. And this, this looks dead on like galena, and actually so does this guy. This one's from Indiana, and it's got, he feel that guy. Yeah, That's wow. heavier than you would expect. This is hefty. It has an SG of about 3.9 to 4.2, so Whoa, that's um, up there. pretty dense. Yeah. They grow them big in Indiana. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Yeah, so this one's also yellow, and it's also from New York. Talk about similar appearances from similar locales. However, one thing that is stand out about this guy compared to the rest of the specimens is that these are gastropod fossils. It was once a living creature. It was once a little living little guy down at the bottom of the ocean, and then one day it died. The organic material in its shell was replaced over time in part by sphalerite. That so you can actually cool. see down in here in this middle guy, there are yellow flecks of sphalerite 
just like on this other New York specimen. I've never seen that. That's, That's really so cool. cool. Sphalerite is one of the most common sulfide materials. You can find it in a lot of different types of deposits. There are a lot of gems that only form in one or two manners, but sphalerite can form in a variety of places, different geologic activity. It can be found in scarn, hydrothermal deposits, sedimentary beds, as a result of different volcanic activity, and granites and coal, and wow. so just a wide variety. A ton of different environments. Yes. Okay, we're gonna do something and we're not <laughs> sure if it's gonna work. So, Sphalerite, like some other gems, including tourmaline, is pyroelectric. So it produces an electric charge when subjected to heat. So we are going to subject some to heat. We're gonna try and heat up some of these sphalerite nuggets. These are from Bulgaria. We're gonna try and attract some flakes of ash to these pyroelectric sphalerites. Get you a oh piece. Oh my goodness, this is so pretty. It's kinda pretty, actually. I love that. It's pretty cold, this is gonna take a while. So, ouch. <laughs> That, that, <laughs> that doesn't hurts. feel very good. Uh, I so think we might need to get the lighter. We might need the lighter. Ow! I scratched myself. <laughs> How hot we gotta get them? I don't know. Ouch. Nah, no, it's gotta it's gotta be. We're not even room temperature. Pass yet. me the lighter. Okay, alright. All right, so you're gonna set it on the ashes and see if they stick. Oh, Do we have stickage? That, it did stick a little bit. It stuck for a minute? It did. You know, at the end of the day, I really think everyone loves playing with fire. Absolutely. Make sure you're a professional before you do this. Oh, that did stick a little bit. Check out our tourmaline yeah. video. <laughs> we did a similar experiment and had Succeeded. a little bit better <laughs> luck. I reckon it's time for our closer look, yeah? Yes. Okay, which one are you gonna pick? I'm going to pick the ah. Bulgarian Sphalerite. I, just, okay. I love the color. I love the cut. I just think it it makes such a statement for itself and it's just beautiful. I want y'all to see it. I would love for you guys to see these fossilized gastropods. I think it's too cool from a scientific perspective. So interesting, we neither of us picked orange or red. We're yeah. both green and yellow. Anyways, take a closer look. Thank you for showing me your newest piece. Congratulations. Oh, That's thank super you. cool. It was just fun when gems make you smile. And sphalerite yeah. to me has such life and vibrancy mm -hmm. to it that it's hard not to smile and to love it when you see it just because it's so cool. I agree. So let us know if you enjoyed our episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.